this was unexpected by the world. With a population hardly larger than some American cities, a tiny Scandinavian country recently constructed a fighter plane that has NATO nations in shock. The underdog that is drawing attention throughout the alliance is Sweden's Gripen. It's inexpensive, it's quick, it works well, and now it's causing some jealousy among NATO generals because Sweden subtly redefined what air superiority actually means, while the rest of the world spends billions to stay in the air. Sweden is not boastful, it didn't. However, it has been subtly creating something remarkable for decades, an air force that not only survives but also rules with intelligence and accuracy. The JAS-39 Gripen, a Saab multi-role fighter, is at the center of it all. Sweden adopted a distinct strategy in contrast to the US or UK's extensive defense programs. They prioritized intelligence over size, adaptability over haughtiness, and efficiency over excess. As a result, the aircraft is sleek and sophisticated, capable of taking off from a highway, returning to the air before most NATO fighters even start their engines, and reloading in 10 minutes. In NATO's Arctic Challenge drills, Sweden's Gripen operated like a futuristic machine. Compared to nearly every other plane in the exercise, it flew more missions every day. Observers were startled by its turnaround time. It's uncommon to witness that kind of speed, dependability, and accuracy all in one package, as even NATO pilots tactfully acknowledged. Jealousy began at that point. This is what NATO discovered. While nations like the US invest billions in the Eurofighter Typhoon and the F-35, Sweden created something more straightforward, intelligent, and environmentally friendly. The most recent version, the Gripen E, is far less expensive than the F-35. The cost of a Gripen flight is approximately $4,700 per hour. For an F-35, about $44,000. It is almost 10 times more. This distinction relates to operational freedom rather than only cost savings. Sweden can afford to keep pilots sharper, train harder, and fly more frequently. A large defense budget is no longer necessary for a nation to be dangerous. All you need is the correct machine. The modular nature of Gripen enables rapid updates. Sweden may modify the plane without requesting permission from foreign contractors, thanks to its open-source software. Sweden's independence feels like a superpower in a world of interdependence and complicated bureaucracy such as NATO. Members of NATO see it, and a lot of people wish their planes were this adaptable. In NATO, jealousy is subtle rather than overt. Generals compare sortie rates in the boardrooms. Gripens outperform more expensive jets during training exercises. Pilots' expressions light up when they realize they have spent billions on a product that won't last as long in the air. Not only does Sweden's Gripen function admirably, but it also exposes the shortcomings in NATO's acquisition process. High maintenance costs make it difficult for many European nations to stay prepared. Long runways, specialized bases, and intricate supply systems are necessary for their fighters. Gripen doesn't. After refueling from a truck, it can operate from a 2,000-meter stretch of road and return to the air in a matter of minutes. Its turnaround team, only six individuals. In contrast, the F-35 frequently necessitates hours of downtime and dozens of technicians. The system is frightened by such simplicity. It reveals the extent to which certain NATO programs have deviated from pragmatism. Furthermore, it portrays Sweden as the bright student who solved the test before the others. The fundamental tenet of Sweden's defense strategy is to never be an easy target. Sweden discovered throughout the Cold War that mobility and quickness were essential to its survival. In order to facilitate quick, dispersed takeoffs, they created BAS-90, a system of concealed runways, woodland strips, and highway segments. This technology was ideal for the Gripen's design. A large airbase is not necessary. Before the opponent discovers what has transpired, it can vanish into the woods, launch from a far-off road, strike, and then return to a concealed base. That's the reason it's scary. In contemporary combat, movement is synonymous with survival. You can survive if you can move. You are a target if you are unable to. This is known to NATO analysts. They witness how Sweden's topography is used as a weapon by the Gripen. 
They also question how many of their own air forces could perform in such a manner under duress. Not many, spoiler alert. The Gripen is connected in addition to being swift. Its sophisticated data link technology enables real-time information sharing between ships, ground stations, and aeroplanes. This is synchronized warfare, not just any communication. Every Gripen in the air sees a target when one of them does. They are synchronized, dangerous, and move like a swarm. Small countries have significant benefits thanks to this networked capabilities. Even adversaries with greater numbers can be overpowered by a squadron of Gripens acting as a single cohesive unit. Because they collaborate rather than because they are faster or more stealthy, Gripens have outperformed American jets in simulations. Most older NATO fighters just cannot match that degree of synchronization. Instead of relying solely on brute force, modern combat is based on data, information, and collaboration. And it is too late for NATO to realize this. Let's be honest. Large aircraft such as the F-15, F-35, and Eurofighter Typhoon have long been essential to NATO's air superiority. Yes, they are powerful. However, they are also costly, bulky, and reliant on extensive supply chains. None of those things apply to the Gripen. It is quick, lightweight, adaptable, and low maintenance. In a world full of supercomputers, it's the smartphone. Sweden continues to upgrade the Gripen with quiet confidence as the F-35 program faces challenges such as software glitches, shortages of spare parts, and maintenance delays. With its new General Electric F414 engine, the Gripen E can now fly at supersonic speeds without the need for afterburners, a capability known as supercruise capability. It also carries cutting-edge armaments, such as the Meteor missile, which few aircraft can match for range. Is it its radar? AESA class, one of the world's most sophisticated. The cockpit? Built on situational awareness rather than clutter, it was intended for use in digital warfare. Hundreds of billions of dollars were invested by NATO nations to improve performance. Sweden did it with efficiency, ingenuity, and focus. This is the point at which jealousy becomes genuine annoyance. In addition to gaining esteem, Sweden's Gripen is also gaining market share. The Gripen has been selected by nations such as the Czech Republic, Thailand, South Africa, and Brazil. Even allies of NATO are tempted. Because of the Gripen's independence, which eliminates the need for complicated licensing procedures, political constraints, and a heavy reliance on American systems, Western behemoths like Lockheed Martin and Eurofighter GmbH lose a customer with each Gripen sold. And it is painful. The Gripen is an ideal substitute for countries that cannot afford the F-35 or do not wish to be subject to U.S. restrictions. It is totally independent, modern, and reasonably priced. The Gripen E's adoption by Brazil was a significant innovation. It enhanced Sweden's standing as a trustworthy defense partner and provided South America with its most cutting-edge fighter. Several NATO nations are uneasy about this worldwide success. They see a smaller, neutral country using smart technology to gain worldwide influence, just as the major nations once did. There is a bitter truth hidden underneath the jealousy. The largest threat to NATO is not an external adversary, but rather its own structure. Large funds don't necessarily translate into more intelligent defense. And the Gripen is a fantastic example of that. The Gripen was designed by Sweden with purpose clarity in mind. It just sought to be the best at what really mattered, not to be everything. Each component of the jet has a specific function. Every feature is there for survival, speed, and efficiency. It has one of the highest preparedness rates in the world as a result. Conversely, NATO must contend with a maze of corporate power, political interests, and never-ending red tape. Every upgrading takes years. Every modification costs millions. The success of Gripen highlights this disparity. It makes one wonder why a large alliance is unable to create something as useful as a tiny country could on its own. The response is painful, because sometimes too much authority inhibits invention. Sweden's position is more crucial than ever 
as tensions in the Baltic and Arctic increase globally. Additionally, its technologies and experience are now a part of NATO as a member. However, that does not make the strain go away. Because NATO's hierarchy wasn't intended for equals, it was built for giants leading weaker states. Sweden is now a living example of how little can be powerful. The development of the Gripen E is still ongoing. Already under work are improvements in AI-assisted systems, radar, and engine efficiency. Maintaining the Gripen's relevance, adaptability, and innovation is Saab's obvious goal. In the meantime, the F-35 continues to encounter cost disputes, software challenges, and availability problems. Agility is superior to luxury, as demonstrated by each new grip and fly. Funding is inferior to that focus. The ability to fly more intelligently will be more important in air combat in the future than having the largest jet. And Sweden excels in that area. Let's be honest, sometimes jealousy is accompanied by respect. Therefore, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Many defense professionals inside NATO secretly applaud Sweden's achievements. The Gripen is a representation of unselfish invention. It exemplifies what may occur when a nation designs with purpose rather than politics in mind. Sweden's dispersed defense model is currently being studied by NATO nations. They're watching how Gripen incorporates data, how it adjusts, and how it stays economical. Because everyone understands in their hearts that this is how air power will develop in the future. The triumph of the Gripen is not limited to Sweden. It serves as a warning to the whole defense sector in the West. Sweden developed a philosophy in addition to a fighter jet, one that prioritizes speed, accuracy, and independence over politics and cost. It's not a noisy gripen. It doesn't show off its flash or stealth. However, it regularly, skillfully, and reasonably delivers. NATO cannot disregard it for this reason, because the gripen demonstrates that the brightest minds, not the largest, will rule the future of combat. For more compelling articles about international defense, innovation, and military policy, press the like button, share this video, and subscribe if you like this in-depth look at Sweden's quiet revolution in air power. Keep an eye out because the next big discovery could come from the most unexpected place.